welcome to The Natural View. I'm Maggie Jacqua. I'm the content director of Whole Foods Magazine, and I'm here with my co-host, Todd Polly of 24 Stories Marketing. Hi, Todd. Hi, Maggie. Good to see you. And our special guest today, welcome Shaheen Mahid. He is the CEO of BGG Americas, and we're thrilled to have you here. Hey, happy to be here. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Todd. All right. So we want to learn about some trending ingredients. And one that is generating so much buzz lately is astaxanthin, which you guys offer as a branded ingredient. So let's dive in. Can you tell us, basically, let's start with the basics. What is astaxanthin? So astaxanthin is basically a microalgae. Um, Hematococcus pulverius is the species name. The way we grow it, the way we do it is quite different from what's out there in the marketplace. You'll find companies that do open ponds uh, and they grow their microalgae. You'll find companies that do it in vessels, uh, but then you'll find a company like us uh, who do do it in these uh, glass photobioreactor tubes. Um, And they're really cool to look at. You can see the videos on our website at bggworld.com. And basically you'll see the algae turn its color get its natural radiance through the sun. And so it makes it for a very powerful antioxidant. And that's basically one of the the most fundamental functionalities of astaxanthin to be a superior antioxidant. But from that basic knowledge, we've seen antioxidant, uh, this antioxidant astaxanthin grow into numerous categories and fields um, and some of them that we'll be talking about today. So it's a pretty exciting microalgae. And I'm happy to share um, some of the more recent studies we've done with it. Yeah. So diving into some of those studies, let's uh, start with eye health. What can you tell us there about some of the research that's been done around eye health? Yeah. So astaxanthin, this year, earlier this year in 2023, we got two papers published. And I find both of them really fascinating because we're not just looking at, um, they were both done on eye health. But we're not just looking at um, simple improvements in eye health and, you know, some of the rudimentary studies that were done before. These two studies looked at, one, the visual stress that that we're all facing today, right? I mean, this is a common practice of being on this uh, video call, uh, mostly being on our phone throughout the day. Uh, You got your tablets, uh, maybe some TV. And there's a lot of input that's coming through visually into our eyes. And that causes stress, which um, I don't think a lot of people have spoken about it before, but this kind of stress can be very damaging, obviously long-term as well. So astaxanthin, our branded astaxanthin ingredient was studied to uh, help reduce some of that stress. And it statistically was significant in showing that it does do that. The second study was on uh, which is, I, I kind of find it cool, the visual, um, uh, the aid that it gave for even hand-eye coordination. So you can improve um, your, your, your stress levels, but also uh, improve your hand-eye coordination. So basically the tests that were done on, on these humans were, we put them uh, on these visual display terminals. And so we're inducing the same kind of activities that you and I would face on a daily basis, but at a a little bit more extreme level and then have them take the supplementation. But then we would see them improve their usage on the visual terminal displays with less stress, but also be able to coordinate better with their hand and and their eye. And so that takes it to a gaming development stage. And that's where I'm kind of interested in seeing how astaxanthin can progress into that category. Yeah, and that's such a huge category right now. We know gaming, and I feel like I'm hearing like it could be anti-aging, active aging, like, you know, we're playing our pickleball and stuff. We need to be fast. Um, Yeah, so can you talk some more about the target markets and how you kind of see it playing out in brands on the marketplace? Yeah, absolutely. Um, What I really enjoyed about that study was the fact that it took people, uh, both men and women, from 20 years old to to the mid-60s. So, uh, you said it right, pickleball. I mean, you see all kinds of ages out there playing that sport, and that's just it, right? So the improvements in hand-eye coordination, I think at, now at a very young age, kids are picking up the tablets and the phones, and and they're just stuck on it in a, in a very, <laughs> um, you know, singular position. And so once they have to get out of that, um, oh my goodness, you know, it's not like us when we were kids, we were playing outside all the time, you know, and we were using 
you know, our body in every which way, in every sport we can imagine, that's not happening as much. So hopefully this types this type of supplementation, and there are other nice supplements out there as well, that can induce the hand-eye coordination a lot better. Uh, you're going to find more age range groups to be more active uh, in, in, the, in the years to come. So uh, that's pretty exciting. So we, you know, we're not... Um, we're not soliciting that you go and just do tablets and you know stay in you know stay in front of your computer and work all day and then take some supplements. No, we want you to be active, but there are cases and of course people that um, do have to do this type of work, and so hopefully these supplements can help them. Yeah, and you know there's so many benefits around astaxanthin. I mean, there's a there's a whole laundry laundry list of of different areas, right? You know, liver health, heart health, beauty. Uh, there's tons. So can you just step in and talk about some of the other benefits that we haven't covered yet? Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you look at things like um, cognition, which is huge. So we had a couple of studies done on cognition. So even before the eye health, we were really um, particular on cardiovascular, on brain health, sports recovery, um, you know, if I can say cholesterol, right? So you know, healthy blood sugar. Um, so those kinds of areas. And um not that we were trying to narrow it down, but, you know, people always ask us, hey, after then, it's just used for everything. You know, what am I supposed to use it for? And I would always go back to them and say, what are you trying to market, right? What What's your niche? Like, who are you trying to catch? So, uh, and it could be, for the last couple of years, sports has been really big because we would always put sports and weight loss together, right? I mean, no one would say, I'm trying to lose weight. Everybody would say, I'm going to the gym. You know, I'm trying to be healthier. And so um, that's a fantastic category to put astaxanthin in there as well. So sports recovery, cardiovascular, uh, blood sugar management, um, joints, right? I mean, joints are a big deal, uh, especially when uh, an, an antioxidant like this can help them. Uh, but cognition and eye health has been something that BGG has really focused on in the last few years. It's really like a laundry list of all the things we want. <laughs> You know, especially yeah. as getting uh, older, aging, you know, the joints and staying active, so important. And so you have the branded ingredient. Can you talk about mm -hmm. what sets the branded ingredient apart from generic or synthetic and other things on the market? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you nailed it. I mean, synthetic. So ours is a natural uh, microalgae. And so the, f the first phase of competition was always, you know, um, going after the these people that would market synthetic astaxanthin. And synthetic astaxanthin just doesn't behave as a, na a natural astaxanthin would, and most likely can be damaging to the, to the human body. We do see synthetic astaxanthin being used in the, um, uh, for example, the fish feed marketplace. Um, but there are also uh, natural astaxanthin would be probably more beneficial. Uh, the other areas where the Astazine uh, brand really excels is we're able to make not just the oils, the oil fractions, but we can make different powder um, variants. So a 5%, a 4%, a 2.5%. And, and those get really exciting because of functionality, right? You're no longer stuck to a capsule or a soft gel with the oils. Uh, we've seen companies move into... Um, powder formats, stick packs. Uh, we can use them in gummies. Uh, I've done some formulations where they've been put into chocolates. Uh, at the Supply Side West, you'll see chocolates, you'll see gummies, you'll see um, even a beverage that we were able to put astaxanthin into. So that becomes really exciting in terms of function, form, and deliverability. You know, you just you just went through a bunch of different formulation opportunities, uh, different different delivery formats. And I'm just curious, you know, what do you see trending right now in terms of all of those delivery formats? Where are people going? And I know it probably depends on category, too. So if you want to mm -hmm. highlight a couple of categories or a couple of formats that you have seen pick up steam in the last year or two. I think without a doubt, um, gummies. You know, it's it's one of those one of those love hate relationships. Um, old timers like myself, you know, we know we know gummies as candy, right? I mean, it's not meant to be a supplement, uh, but we can't face or fight the tide that's that's going on. You know, you look at some of the reports that are coming out. Uh, you'll see the categories where capsules and tablets and soft gels and powder formats. There's a huge part now of that pie belonging to gummies, and so. You may not like it, you may not agree with it, uh, 
but that's the deliver deliverable that consumers are taking in. And um, that's surprisingly on the rise. <laughs> so um, we, we thought it would kind of fizz away, but it's not. And so if you have an ingredient, uh, for example, we have astaxanthin. One of the first things I did when I got you know, hold of the raw material was to call up friends in the industry and find out, help, help put, put this into a gummy. And that's what they did. And so we do see quite a bit of pickup on that part. But then you have the sports nutrition people where they still like everything in powder. So can this be mixed in properly with a whey protein isolate? Yeah, absolutely. We've done that. Uh, I got uh, people in, in the industry that do beverages really well. And so my next output was, hey, can we produce a beverage that doesn't have the astaxanthin? The, the astaxanthin sometimes people get a fishy flavor or note. Ours doesn't have that. And if you go into a beverage, uh, it can be patentable like, with flavor. It can be... Um, it doesn't have to have a discerning color. So those forms and functionalities we're able to do with our brand. So yeah, beverages, powder mixes, and gummies. They're pretty popular right now. Yeah, and you, you talked about the chocolate too. We actually uh, had Scott Dicker from yeah. Spins on uh, recently on our Naturally Informed event. And he talked about kind of the emergence of the candy suitical too, which I wasn't familiar with that phrase. So candy suitables oh, yeah. are coming as well. <laughs> So yeah, I love um, chocolate. Is- I mean, this is just a note. I love chocolate. So I think even yeah. that was probably one of the first formats I, I, I worked on. And we work with a company out of uh, New York, New Jersey, and they do these Belgian um, chocolates. And it's really delicious, both milk chocolate and dark chocolate. So yeah, swing by the booth and pick up some. Yeah, if they're well, left. I, if any are left. I, I definitely will. <laughs> I definitely will supply side. Um, so what else is on the horizon? Anything else that we should know about or be keeping our eyes on from BGG? Yeah, we got quite a bit in the works. You know, um, I think the the astaxanthin is predominant for BGG. A lot of, a lot of you know, customers know us by that. But there are a number of other ingredients uh, that BGG is, uh, is doing right. It's doing pretty well in the marketplace. One is their bilberry, and it, and fantastically, bilberry has about four human studies um, on on eye health as well. So bilberry is a popular ingredient. We don't want to forget about it. We know that lutein and zeaxanthin, uh, which we also uh, supply, they dominate about about a third of the industry for eye health supplements contains lutein and zeaxanthin. And one of the things that I I can see happening is those formulations will start catering and putting in a small percentage of astaxanthin. And that's going to be fantastic because astaxanthin bonds really well with lutein. So we can see that take off. Bilberry is another great example. In fact, there's a number of berries that BGG does, right? So um, bilberry is one of them. Lingonberry is is another one. Um, uh, Blackberry is another one for cardiovascular health. So I think be on the lookout for a lot of berries to come into play. Um, I think there's a good opportunity for companies that haven't dabbled in that space or know too much about it. Uh, we have the science and we have the raw materials for, for that. Uh, astaxanthin, we continue to grow um, and diversify the, the, the powder format so that more companies can uh, use less of it if they're putting it into a capsule or tablet and they want to put other ingredients. So we're helping them trying to formulate with less of the astaxanthin, but making it more concentrated. Uh, the other ingredients, tocotrienols, it's a very superior form of vitamin E. Um, we have uh, the rice version, the annatto version, and the palm oil version. And that's been growing in segments like the hair care industry. Uh, and I think that's going to be exciting you know, as we see a lot more lifestyle type of companies come into play in the industry. So yeah, those are some of the exciting things going on with BGG. Oh, that's great. So you have a lot of products in the market and, you know, I'd be remiss to ask you about supply chain just because you've been one of those voices over the last couple of years in this discussion throughout the industry. So if I can trouble you for just a quick update, where do you see things going in 2024? Supply chain issues still prevalent or, you know, are things getting better? What do you think, Shaheen? I have a very simple answer. And and I think it's, I think the I think most of the people listening will understand this very quickly. Uh, It's just going to be expensive. 
There, are there supply chain issues? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I don't think they're going away anytime soon. Uh, are there solutions to it? Absolutely. There are tons of solutions to it. Um, all of that costs money. And I think it's something people don't want to hear. People may not want to understand that, but that's where we are today. It, it's just more expensive. None of the container costs have really come down, right? So those same containers uh, pre, uh, pre-pandemic, uh, are, are they more available now? Yeah. Yeah. You can get more containers. You can get more shipments done. Have they come down in price? No. <laughs> so, you know, I always struggle with this because we do tell them, hey, stock is readily available. You know, we can get back into you know, actively supplying you. And, you know, my previous company and the company I'm with today, we took great um, strategic decisions to make stock available. And I'm really proud of that. But none of that was cheap. None of that was inexpensive. And I think that part, some of the B2B customers miss out. Um, consumers are getting really aware of it because they're paying more. You and I are paying more for those same supplements, right? Um, now, supplement companies can be really tricky because they can then lower the dosage or lower the, the count and give you a bottle and say, oh, look, you know, we kept it at the same price. No, you didn't. <laughs> you, know, you did your tricks to make it work in the economy of scale. And that's the, that's the reality of the situation. So, I don't know if I best answered your question. Are there supply issues? Yes. Are there solutions? Yes. Is it costly out there? Absolutely. Yes. And yes. Just to be. <laughs> so how about a bright note to leave us with as we end? Something that um, we can look ahead to 2024, uh, innovations back, anything you want to spotlight? No, that's a great, um, great way to end it. So I am adamant on meeting customers as much as possible. Uh, in, in fact, I've, I've had a, a very good friend in the industry um, who's another CEO at another company. He says, how do you do it? How do you go out and meet so many customers? And and, and why do you do it? Uh, the why part is easy, right? Uh, the why part is because I, I, I only know what I know in my shoes, like what I'm living now, what I'm told, you know, um, you know, by my manufacturing site and what I can see when I go out to the marketplace. But the why is when I talk to you know, this other CEO, when I talk to the customers, I want to know what it's like in their shoes. You know, what are they facing? You know, and it doesn't always have to be about my business or my ingredients. They're having trouble with X. They're having trouble with A, whatever it is. And so maybe there's somebody that I can, you know, uh, offer them to help them, et cetera, et cetera. The how part, that, that's difficult. That's picking up the phone and calling and calling, getting rejected and saying, no, I'm busy. No, I don't, you know, I work from home now, you know, I can't meet with you and, and yada, yada, yada. But I can tell you the bright note is it's been increasing. There's been more meetings. I've been able to get out and see a lot more people. There's a lot more activity happening in this industry. And, I'm, and that's really exciting. Again, it doesn't have to be about the ingredients I'm selling today. It's just that people are consuming more and more supplements. And that part, that's the bright part of everything. Excellent. We love it. We love ending on a bright note. So Shaheen, is always great talking to you. Thank you for joining us once again on The Natural View. We love having you here. And um, people can follow up, learn more on your website. And as you said, you're looking to connect. So uh, we hope our viewers do that. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm.